So imagine you had three graphs and you liked all of them and you wanted to combine them into a single graph. Well, one way you could do that is with a piecewise function. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of y equals x plus 2. The piece that I'm going to get is everything to the left of that line. Okay, That's what I'm interested in. Uh, that line is negative 1. I'm going to take a piece of this graph. Uh, I'm going to choose the piece from where I left off here, negative 1, and to here, 1. Okay, negative 1 and 1. And then for this graph here, I'm going to choose everything beyond 1. I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to take this piece, and I'm going to glue them all together into a single piecewise. And this is my Frankenstein function here. We've got y equals x plus 2 until we get to here, and then we have y equals 1 for this straight bit here, and then we have y equals x squared for this bit here. Now I keep calling it a function. It's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Now how do we write this algebraically so we can communicate to someone that that's what we want? Alright, so f of x equals a big bracket because we're going to put three different functions here. So f of x equals x plus 2, f of x equals 1, and f of x equals x squared. But then we need to tell people when to use this function, when to use this function, and when to use this function. If x is less than, and I'm going to mess around with the less than or equal to sign, so just wait a moment. x plus 2, if x is less than negative 1. f of x equals 1, if x is between negative 1 and 1. And f of x equals x squared if x is larger than 1. Now there is a problem here. This is not correct. okay? Because I'm saying if x is less than negative 1. And here I'm saying if x is between negative 1 and 1. And here I'm saying if x is greater than 1. There are two numbers here that I am not accounting for. Negative 1 and positive 1. There is no instruction here on what to do, what function to use, if x is exactly negative 1. So I need to put a less than or equal to sign somewhere. Um, I'm going to put a less than or equal to sign line there, right? Now, if I put one there, that means if x is equal to negative 1, use this function. That means that I definitely cannot put it there, because if I put it there, I'm giving someone two contradictory instructions. If x is less than or equal to negative 1, use this, or if it's equal to negative 1, use this, and if it's equal to this, use this. So, if you're going to use that there, you can't use it there. Now, what if x is equal to 1? Uh, well... At the moment, there's nothing. There's nothing. I'm choosing nothing. So I'm going to put it here. If x is equal to 1, do this thing here. And then I absolutely can't put a less than or equal to sign there because that would be giving the instruction to do two different things when x is equal to 1. So that's what a piecewise function is. Let me show you a quick example of a question you might get asked. So this is the uh, question you might get asked. Sketch this piecewise function. So first of all, let's consider what they look like individually. Uh, and I'm doing just some rough ideas here. I'm just trying to get a sense of what it is. Okay, so uh, x squared, that's an easy one. That's why I'm doing it first. Okay, uh, this one here, 1 on x plus 2. Well, a hyperbola, like, a, like 1 on x, looks like that. But this isn't 1 on x. This is 1 on x plus 2. That's going to look like that, just shifted over a little bit. Instead of having an asymptote at 0, it's going to have an asymptote at negative 2. Now this is just very informal work, just to get a sense of what I'm doing. Now it says f of x, 1 on x plus 2, if x is less than negative 2. So use this function if x is less than negative 2. So uh, this is negative 2 right there. So it says I need to use that part of my sketch when I'm there. And it says, use x squared if x is less than or equal to negative 2. All right, there's negative 2 there. Okay, and I'm going to use that portion of my sketch here. 
Now, it's going to be important that I show my key points here. So there's going to be some key points because I'm going to use that portion of my thing. So I need to know what that point is right there. Uh, and then this one here can kind of float in space. We might find a point right there. Talk about that point. So here's my Cartesian plane. Let's do the quadratic because it just feels so much easier. This bit from zero to there, that's fine. It's easy. But then I just need to do this other half here, right? And I only want to go to negative 2. So make it symmetrical, because quadratics are symmetrical. That should be symmetrical. And then we need to think about what that point is, right? It says x is greater than or equal to, so we're going to include it. So I'm going to put a big circle there to say we're including that point. Um, and then we've got this x is greater than negative 2. All right, so if x is negative 2 and we're putting it into that function, negative 2 squared is 4. So that point there is negative 2, 4. Okay, and then we've got this other thing here. We've got an asymptote. We also have another asymptote along here like that. Right? And then we have this hyperbola here. Now, we don't really have any guideposts here, so it would be useful to sub a value into this function, say, negative 3. So, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is negative 3. So, what's this value supposed to be, negative 3? Well, if I put negative 3 into there, 1 over negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So that value there is supposed to be negative 1. Now, I've already shown you that this point here is 4, which means that negative 1 is like right, it's there somewhere. So I really needed this hyperbola to pass through like that point right there. So I need to rethink the way that I've drawn it. And it's fine to do that. You're using a pencil. You're making some sort of calculations as you go. You're thinking about things. I want my hyperbola to go through there. Oops. And it looks a bit more like that, heading off to our asymptote, heading off down through our asymptote in that direction. All right, those are piecewise functions, and that is how you sketch them.